Hi everyone, my name is Shorey Elhami and I'm here to talk about GIS Core. Uh, GIS Core is a volunteer program which is run um, t entirely by um, volunteers and it's a program of URISA, Urban and Regional Information System Association. It, was, it came to existence in 2003, um, however the idea is actually 10 years old uh, just this past uh, October. Um, the mission statement of GIS Core is coordinating short-term volunteer uh, projects in all communities all over the world that are in needs of our expertise. And those could be either in disaster projects or non-disaster projects, and also can be remote or on-site. The services that our volunteers provide varies from uh, geocoding to damage assessment to uh, analysis, spatial modeling, remote sensing and capacity building to name a few. Uh, it's run by a core committee whose main job are uh, basically establishing policies, protocols, guidelines, uh, building partnerships, uh, evaluating projects and of course selecting volunteers for various projects. We have over 2,500 volunteers from all over the world, nine, 93 countries, and with the average years of experience of our volunteers is seven and a half years. And these volunteers basically come uh, from everywhere and their expertise are very much varied. And uh, I just picked some of those so you can get a feel for the fact that about a quarter of our volunteers uh, have disaster management expertise, about 18% open source, and many in remote sensing and so on. So 249 of these volunteers have been deployed to 80 missions so far, about 10% of our volunteer body, and, and to 39 countries. And uh, the majority of those have been deployed to disaster response projects. However, also majority of them have been uh, deployed remotely rather than mm, being sent on site. Also, the type of missions, uh, as you can see, shows that the larger number of volunteers actually have gone to the disaster response, but the number of volunteers are larger in the non-disaster. As far as capacity building goes, and what that means is that we basically send volunteers to teach, teach GIS in anything uh, that an organization wants us, as far as the type of software or skills, or they create data sets, data sets of great level of details or not so in detail. The one on upper left is, for instance, very detailed data set for North Korea. On, the, on uh, the bottom is for Panama, a hydrology data set. The geocoding ex uh, example that I have here is for Darfur and East Sudan. And the one down there is for trend analysis for a non-profit uh, organization in Mozambique. Also other projects that we have on our volunteers have worked on are mm, disaster response related that I mm, included some of those, uh, post Katrina and post tsunami, uh, we started with those and about eight projects of ours uh, were deployed in those areas. Um, and uh, in fact, uh, one of the Katrina related projects is still going on where we are trying to, one of our volunteers uh, designed an interface that uh, is helping the city of New Orleans to monitor damaged structures within the city still and, and that's an ongoing project. Um, the other disaster response uh, was at the request of UNOSAT where we deployed 32 volunteers from five countries remotely. They worked off of a wiki site and this was in response to uh, Cyclone Nargis and uh, they basically uh, compiled about 60,000 uh, or so features off of Google environment. Post Haiti, a couple of projects, one of which was for ICOMIS, which is a nonprofit who wanted to save buildings that they wanted to save from demolition. And uh, they used oblique imagery from pictometry. The disaster response that we worked in Albania was post flood and in response to a flood. And that was our first project with OSM. And nine of our volunteers basically ended up digitizing a variety of the features for the area affected by the flood. The Australian Red Cross asked for three volunteers and two of them ended up being on, uh, on site and one of them uh, was a remote uh, volunteer and they actually conducted a GIS needs assessment uh, for disaster response. Two of the more recent projects were in Japan 
and we uh, worked with the International Charter through USGS and uh, provided a remote sensor. And uh, then came the first request from Crisis Commons, which is the project to the right. And uh, after that, we did the second project with the Crisis Commons. And those two actually were the projects that introduced us more to the crowdsourcing community. And that's basically the reason that we're here uh, this week. And we're very much pleased to see all this fantastic work being done. So during the break, please, if you have any questions, come to us. We'd love to make our volunteers available to your projects. Thank you very much.